Welcome back, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. You know, I was uh, keeping track of all the, the high-tech powerhouses that are supporting Apple in its fight against the government and, you know, helping them out with getting the names and details on this phone, of the alleged terrorists behind the San Bernardino attacks. And it reads like a who's who, whether you're talking uh, Google, uh, but now backing Apple in this uh, response, Cypress Conduct, all these others who say, yeah, this might be the way to go. Uh, now, lawmakers are trying to find a middle ground on this and basic rules on encryption and what is shared and what's not. It's kind of a mess here. But we've got the former Homeland Security Secretary, Tom Ridge. And Secretary, I think we've made this a much bigger sort of a, a constitutional production than, than, than is warranted. It's one phone. It's one device. We know it's the device attached to the guy behind the San Bernardino attacks. Uh, the government is saying open up all devices everywhere. It's saying this device. So how is this morphed into some sort of a, you know, freedom of speech, a privacy crisis here? I, I, I might be missing something. What, what is it? Well, Neil, I happen to, uh, at this point, share that uh, point of view. However, I say in, the, in what uh, you and I have discussed and what we call the digital forevermore, there will be other incidents that we'll have to review uh, how we deal with it. But on this particular incident, uh, it is a known terrorist attack. We know who the terrorists were. And, and let me say at the outset that I have uh, uh, great respect for Mr. Cook. He is, in a very laudable and very passionate uh, means, uh, expressed his concern about their IP, about privacy. But I also want, uh, would like him to put on his hat of corporate responsibility and social responsibility. And I'd like everybody on both sides to tone down the rhetoric and uh, say to each other, uh, there is a way we can do this. Uh, technologically, there's a way we can do this. And I don't think the FBI is asking him to turn over the code or asking their software engineers to open up all phones under all circumstances at all times. They're saying on this particular occasion, since it's a known terrorist event and there may be information about other other co-conspirators involved in this event, we would like you, under these very exclusive circumstances, uh, do put on that uh, corporate and social responsibility hat and help us out. All right. Well, they're not doing that so far, Governor, as you know. And their argument goes something like this. If we do it on this case at this time, uh, there'll be other justifications in future time. Part of me sees that argument here, but it's not as if they're, they're, they're giving away the store. Or, or how they opened up that phone. For one thing, Apple says it doesn't have the ability to do that, which I find hard to believe. But assuming that's the case, uh, where are we going with this? What, if if well, they're saying they can't do it, then, then where does that go? Well, if they're saying they can't do it, it's, it's, it tests my credibility and perhaps yours and a lot of other people. I've talked to enough people in the space that say they can, it's a matter of will. And understanding and appreciating the, everybody's concern about privacy, and I share that same concern, but I think in the 21st century, given the situation that we've, not only this situation, but foreseeable situations, uh, uh, we really need the, the, to tone down the rhetoric, uh, understand that they're not mutually exclusive in the 21st century. I would say to Mr. Cook the following, if the incident had occurred at an Apple facility, and there was reason to believe that another incident would occur at an Apple facility, and the government had information that you wanted to protect your employees. Would you do whatever you could, whatever you could, to secure that information in a way that's protect a very, their privacy? That's and an excellent point. That's an excellent of point. Of course he would do but, it. You know, I, I know I'm the crass money nerd here at Fox, uh, Governor. You know what I'm talking about. I think all of this comes back to money. I think right now a lot of Apple users skew young. Uh, they're very big into privacy. That's their won't, and that's their right. And I think a lot of these tech companies uh, sort of lean left. And, and on these issues, they're, they're going to go where their base is and where they think their money and profits are. And if the base and those profits are, are, are built on, on protecting folks' privacy, which is a laudable goal, I have nothing against that, even in the case and even in the face of something like this, they're going to honor that. And I think that, that's kind of creepy, too. Well, Neil, that's why I say they, they, they really need to put the, that hat of corporate or social responsibility on. And let's, let's be very, very clear. I think there's technology they could do it. In this instance, they're only asking to get into access to one phone. But because of the sophistication, because of the digital forevermore, because of the escalation of use of technology, uh, our ability to track criminals and uh, drug runners and terrorists, and the list goes on and on. At some point in time, and maybe it's through the president's commission they just announced the other day, you have the rhetoric cool it down, 
have a common meeting of the minds, understanding that there's, it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive, and under a certain set of circumstances, and maybe not the way the FBI wants to do it, but there's got to be a way that we could do it together and still protect the, the basic right of privacy. I'm absolutely convinced to be done. I think it's a matter of will rather than capability. What they say, uh, Governor, real quickly on this issue is that even if we were to do that with the one device, uh, the government will discover how we did it. And that that means the government then won't even have to ask us next time. They'll just do it themselves. Well, I got an answer for that. Just have your software engineers in a, uh, in a room that's uh, uh, on their own. Uh, they can extract the information, open the door, hand it to, to the FBI, close the door, and whatever process they used is still known only to them. And I presume and I understand that uh, Mr. Cook would have nothing but the strongest uh, patriots and strongest protection around that capability. So do it, open the door, hand the information to the FBI, and then let's settle this and not argument, but let's take this discussion to a level where we find a solution. You know what I think that we should do? And uh, If you've ever been to an Apple store, Governor, and I'm sure you have people yeah. who go for you if you have trouble yeah. with your devices. But if you ever go, those guys in the blue shirt, they can do anything. And I think they should just secret that phone out, go to an Apple store, one of the guys there do it. Uh, it's done. The whole issue's done. Well, they've got some brilliant engineers that brilliant. throughout Apple and Google and every place else. There's no doubt in my mind that they could gain access and right. extract the information needed without divulging how they did it, what modifications Absolutely. they made to the technology, and hand it out the door. But uh, I think this is the first of many incidents, and that's all the more reason that perhaps the President's Commission and the private sector and government really need to get together and work this out, because this is, only, unfortunately, this will not be the last incident where uh, information with regard to murder, crime, drugs, terrorists is contained on a device, and we have to be able to access that under, with a search warrant, with a search warrant, we need to be able to access You're right. that. You're right. I don't know. We make this such a big to-do, but holy cow. Governor, it's always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very, very much.